let's run this application again and click the button and reach the breakpoint. And I'll step over a couple times. And we're kind of going to pay attention to the variable x. So I'm going to pin a tip about x. Now I'm about to increment x, so it's going to go from 3 up to 4. And I want you to imagine that instead of incrementing x from 3 to 4, what that line of code actually did was something reasonably complicated and difficult like opening a file and parsing it and getting the value x out of it. And that it didn't work. I got some sort of error message. But I realized the reason it didn't work is not because of a problem in my code, but because of a problem in my setup that I say didn't have the file there to parse. And what I'd love to be able to do is Alt-Tab, you know, over to a, a Windows Explorer window, fix my problem, and then back up and try it again. And I can do exactly that. So I can right-click this line and choose Set Next Statement. And the yellow arrow moves and we'll go back over this line, x becomes 3, then we'll increment it, and x goes back up to 4. It's a brave step. I mean, if I back up again here and say, set next statement, then step again, x now goes to 5, and then when I increment it again, it goes to 6, and you can see I could end up with x being as high a value as I want. Uh, it's not always a safe thing to be doing, but I can do it. I can back up as far as I want. I can back all the way up to here if I want. And any problems this causes by processing files twice or deleting things twice or whatever, they're totally my fault. And it's something that you really only do if you know what you're doing. You can contrast that to run to cursor, which just says, I don't feel like stepping one line at a time. I want to zip right down here to kind of the good stuff. And what's what we've been doing when we come in on this demo, saying let's get down to the parts that change X. Well, you don't have to just mash on the next step, 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 step. You can just right click and say run to cursor. That doesn't control the order of execution. Set next statement, that does control the order of execution. Now let's step over this one more time. So now X has the value three. And I'm gonna bring the locals window back. You can see in here that X has the value three. If I have some sort of bug that I want to fix, I can actually fix it by clicking in here, just double click, and I can type in a new value and press enter. You can see that everywhere in the tip and in the pop-up and everywhere, that's the new value. And if I step over, we're going to increment it to 11. I can also change the value here in the pin tip. It takes a little careful typing, but there. Now I have a new value for X. Or if I don't have a pin tip, let's close that and I hover, move on, and click carefully, I can change the value of x again to anything I like. And you can see down here in the locals window, it's reminding you always what that is. Now, let's do something even freakier. I'll set the next statement back up to here again. And imagine that I'm reading ahead, and I say we're gonna increment it and then increment it, and I realize, no, that's not what I wanna do. I want to increment it up to 4 and then decrement it right back down to 3. It doesn't make any sense, but just play along. I can actually change the code. We're still debugging. The app is still running. We don't lose our spot. And when I go step over, see down here in the orange it says code changes were applied successfully. And we step over here. We incremented it up to 4. And now when we step over this line, we're running the new code, it's been decremented back down to 3, and I've solved my bug without having to stop, make the change, rebuild, and then run and get myself back to the problem. I just fixed it right while I was there. It's very nice.